welcome to Heart at Home with Rachel Hare. My name is Rachel Hare and thank you for tuning in to our fourth workshop in this series. Um, I'm really pleased with how things are going and thank you so much to all of you who've messaged me with messages of encouragement and it's been great really to know that you've been enjoying the tunes that I've been teaching you so far. So we've had, we've learned, what have we done? We've learned a march which is also a song and we've learned a strafspe, a good highland strafspe and last week we learned one of my own tunes, a wee waltz. So this week we're going to learn a jig. So remember, if you haven't done so already and you'd rather have the music with you as you learn, pause the video, nip over to heartathome.com and you can purchase the PDF. So it's just a small price for that, £3, but that just helps me support me in making these workshops and in my career as a freelance musician and teacher. So thank you so much for again for doing all this. Um, remember to subscribe if you're on YouTube and if you wouldn't mind actually I've decided to kind of open up the review section of my Facebook page so if you've got some nice words and you fancy writing them down for others to see please do consider reviewing me on Facebook because well reviews just help spread the word about what I'm trying to do which is promoting the music that I love to play on the harp. So yes what are we going to do today? So I uh, yeah, I told you a little bit about this last week. Can you guess? Right, I've got a few kind of like accompaniments today for the introduction. I'm going to take you to a very special place, a place that's very close to my heart, to the Isle of Man. So, I've got lots of things around me from the Isle of Man. I've got the flag, the cat with no tail, some Max Tartan, good old Max saying there, there's a boat in the morning. If you annoy folk, you just say, there's a boat in the morning, they'll tell you. And beautiful picture of Peel Castle there as well. I really miss the Isle of Man. So just to let you know a bit about it. So the Isle of Man is the smallest of the Celtic nations. It's situated in the middle of the Irish Sea. So it's between Scotland, Ireland, England and Wales, kind of right in the middle of the Irish Sea. And it's quite a small island, to be honest. It's about 32 miles long. 10 miles wide, 14 miles wide maybe at the kind of um, widest part and it's around the size, it's just a little bit smaller than Chicago actually so it's small in landmass, it's got beautiful beaches and cliffs and mountains and there's actually, a, whew, there's quite a lot of people that live there, there's 80,000 people that live in the island and it's what's known as a crown dependency so it's an independent country but the Queen of Great Britain is still the boss there and well I have a lot of time for the Isle of Man. I've been visiting the island for some 13 years now. My fiance is from the island. And as well as that, I'm also the harp teacher for the island. So I have the absolute privilege of normally, I must say, visiting the Isle of Man once a month to teach Manx harp. So that's Manx music on our Celtic harp, on our kind of lever harp. And Manx music, I guess, well, if you think about where the island is, it's between Ireland, Scotland, England and Wales. That kind of describes its music as well. It's kind of, kind of a bit Irish, a bit Scottish, some kind of English folk dance kind of stuff going on there, the odd Welsh tune as well. It's kind of a mishmash of everything right in the centre of these kind of Celtic influences. And one of the things that I really like about the island actually is that their music tradition is still very closely related to the dance tradition. Manx dancing is a big thing on the island and a lot actually of the musicians that are playing on the island, both amateur and professional, started out playing because they played for the dancing and many still do play for the dancing. Now there's four dance groups on the island. There is, let me see if I can get this right, the Manx Folk Success, Folk, Manx Folk Dance Society, who are based in the kind of Douglas area, Douglas on Canaria, in the east of the island. Down in Balasala, you have Perry Ben, the White Jackets, they're in the south. To the west, you have Skerringerig, which means, I think that means uh, Red Kippers, and um, that's in Peel. And then you have Nefeni in the north of the island in Ramsey. And it tends to be that musicians in the island will kind of have um, kind of an affirmative with one of the dance groups. I'm kind of associated mostly with Perry Ben on the south of the island because that's the dance group 
that my fiance grew up in. He used to dance for them and then he eventually played for them and his mum and dad still play for them. But I'm also associated with Nefeni in the north of the island and the reason I'm actually associated with Nefeni is because a lot of my harp players play for Nefeni. It's a great tradition of harp playing, well there is now a great tradition of harp playing in the north of the island in particular and Nefeni are mostly a kind of kind of young almost professional to be honest. They're, they're a young dance group, great dancers and they always have lots of musicians playing with them and they've been so supportive of my harp players, my harp students. So I have a lot of time for Nafini. They've done a lot for us as the harp for the harp players on the island and played with them a couple of times as well. Played with them um, at a festival down in Cornwall kind of filling in for one of my pupils who couldn't make the festival. So got a lot of time for them. And actually one of the, the one of the tunes, the tune I should say, that we're going to learn today is a jig called Fathery Jig. So this is a tune that people play, but it's also a dance. And you'll find this with Manx music. Lots of the tunes that they play are originally dances or they're known, you know, they're played for the dancing. So the Fanny are one of the dance groups that dance the Fathery Jig. And well, before I play it to you, I'm going to let you see them dance the Fadaby Jig. So this was taken in um, this video at the Lorient Inter-Celtic Festival, the biggest Celtic festival in the world, where Nefeni were performing as part of the year of Isle of Man and Cornwall. It was an amazing year to be in Lorient. I went and we had 10 days of celebration of Manx music alongside with our Cornish music friends. So we had such a ball and Nefeni really were stars of the show. So yeah, here they are now dancing the Fadaby Jig. dancing there by Nefeni. Really do love their dancing and I've got a lot of time for all the dancers and the organisers, particularly Juin and Su Ling, who help choreograph the dances for them all. So I guess it's time for you to hear the kind of version that we're going to be learning. So I'm going to play you the Fathery Jig and I'm actually, I'm going to be a little bit generous today. I'm going to give you another tune as well. I'm not going to teach you the other tune but I'm going to give you the sheet music for another jig that goes well with this, another Manx tune. So I'm gonna play you the Fadaby jig, and then I'm gonna go into a tune called Three Little Boats. So both of these tunes are regularly played in sessions on the Isle of Man. So they're good ones to know. So yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy learning Fadaby jig with myself and that you'll push yourself to learning Three Little Boats as well. So yeah, I'll give you a play. <laughs>
had a bee jig, which we're going to learn now. And once through the tune, three little boats went out to sea. So we'll head over to the green screen. Um, we'll learn the tune and then of course we'll come back here for a wee blether afterwards. So let's head over. Okay, so the father be jig, a lovely jig from the Isle of Man. You need your harp in D major for this one, the tune's in D major. So that means you need your F sharps and your C sharps on. Uh, my harp is tuned to E flat major, so that means I have the A, the E, the B, the F and the C levers up. So A, E, B, F and C levers on. Of course, um, check it's in D major by playing a scale from D to D. It sounds happy we should be in business good so i'm going to play you the first part of the tune twice through to help you kind of get familiar with it have a listen your thumb on the high F, that F sharp, and the second in the E. Okay, so as quite often harp players do, I'm actually going to probably just, when if we ever play an F or a C for example, I'll probably just call them Fs and Cs instead of F sharps and C sharps, which technically they are, but just for quickness sake, I'm probably just going to call them F and C. So thumb on F and second in E. Have a listen. E, F, then I'm going to use my third finger onto the A. So, second on E, thumb on F. I'm going to play the E. And then I'm going to start to pop my third finger out to grab onto the A below it. I'm going to play F, A. So we have E, F, A. Let's try that together after two. Now, this is a jig, so it's in groups of three. So one, two, three, two, two, three. It's in six, eight. We don't really, I mean, we don't ever really tend to count jigs as one, two, three, four, five, six. That's just a little bit. I find that strange if people do that. Um, jigs tend to be counted as one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. Okay, or and that means you have the strong beat, the beat one, and the beat on beat two. So the E is going to come before the first beat of the bar. The F is actually going to be the first beat of the bar. So it's going to go like this: one, two, E F A. Let's try it together: one, two. One more time. One, two. Good. Now keep your hand down there because your second finger is going to go on A and your thumb on B. We're going to play another A, this time with that second finger we've just played on. We're going to go A, B. Let's just try those two notes after two together. One, two. Okay, so when that puts together, it's actually going to sound like this. Try together, E, F, A, then A, B. One, two. One more time. One, two. Great. The rest of that goes like this. Okay, and once we've done that, that's the end of the first phrase. <laughs> so three, two, one on A, B and C. You're going to play straight up and straight down. Have a listen. Count to two, we'll play it together. One, two. One more time. One, two. Okay, so that's our first phrase. Okay, it's quite a lot already. Have a listen. E, F, A, A, B. Up three from A and down again. Okay, let's see if we can do that together after two. One, two. Okay, one more time. One, two. One more time. So E, F, A. Two and one on A and B. Up three from A and back down again. One, two. Down again. Well done. 
Now our thumb is going to play an F. So start of our second phrase starts with an F. We're going to use our thumb because our third finger's been down there. Thumb's the closest to get up there. We're going to use our second finger to play another F now. Okay, quite simply just F, F. Let's try those two tricky two F notes after two together. One, two. One more time, so you can hear that rhythm, it's on the strong beats, that's on those strong kind of beats. One, two. Good. Now we're going to go up three from the E, so we have E, F sharp, G. We're going to go up three from E, we're going to turn and come straight back down to the D. Have a listen. So it's going... E, F, lean on that G, so slightly longer there. Let's try it together after two. One, two. One more time. One, two. Good. So that second phrase goes like this. Two Fs. Up three from E and down four to that D. Try it together after two. One, two. Go again. Two Fs. One, two. Okay, so we have our first phrase learnt and our second phrase learnt. Remember, four phrases in each part, okay? Have a listen to what we have so far. So we have E, F, A. Then A, B. Up three from A and back down the same notes. So you only have one C at the top there. Two Fs. Up three from E and straight back down to the D. Okay, let's go for that again. After two. One, two. Up three from A and back down to the same A. Two Fs. Good. So you'll be relieved to hear that the third phrase, like a lot of, like a lot of Scottish tunes actually, um, this Manx tune has the same third phrase, or as the first phrase. So the third phrase is the same as the first. So our third phrase therefore goes E F A A B up three from A and back down. Okay, well, let's try that together. One, two. Up from A, back down. Good work. Let's therefore try the phrases one, two, and three together. So from the start. One, two. Up from A, back down. Two Fs at the top. Up from E and down to the D. Third same as the first. Up from A. Nice work. Let's go for it again. From the start, after two. One, two. A, B, up from A and back down again. Two Fs. Up from E and down to the D. Back to the third phrase, same as the first. Up from A and back down again. Lovely. Let's do our fourth phrase, otherwise known as our ending phrase. Have a listen to it first. So we're going really very up high here. So second finger in A and thumb on B. We're going to split this into three sections. We're going to go first. A, B, A. So two, one, two on A, B, A. Let's try that after two together. One, two. Good. Now, pop your thumb on that A because we're going to go down four in a row from A. So down A, G, F sharp, B. And that means you're going to end up with two A's in a row there because you're playing that A again. Yeah. So down, straight down after two. One, two. So when that goes together, A, B, a, down four from A. Let's see if we can put those two bits together to start with. One, two. Down four from A. 
Try that again after two, A, B, A, then down four from A. One, two. Now put your thumb on the F and we're going to go down three notes from F, E, D. So F, two, D. Yeah. So have a listen. A, B, A, down four from A to that E, down three from F to D. Let's try all of that fourth phrase, the ending phrase together. One, two. Let's go again. One, two. Good. Okay. So, to remind you, the first phrase, we had E, F, A. Another A because we had A, B. Up three from A and back down. One F. A second F with our second finger. Up three from E and down four to the D. Third phrase is the same, so E, F, A. Up three and down to the A. Ending phrase now, A. Good, so let's play all of that twice through. That's all of our first part done. Fast learning today. EFA, after two. One, two. Up from A and back down. Two Fs. Up from E and back down to the fourth. Third, same as the first. ABA, down four from A. Down three from D. Back to the start. E, F, A. Good work. Excellent. Let's look at the second part. I'm going to play it to you twice through so you can get it in your head. Have a listen. Okay, so there is a lot of repetition in this section, okay? So we're not so much going to split this into four phrases with this, okay? I'm not going to be talking about the phrases really until we get to our ending phrase, which is the same as the first part. What we have in this is a little sequence. We're going to put four, three, two, one up in a row from that F sharp. So we have F, G, A, B. We're going to run up those, then use our second finger to play the A again. So you've got... F, G, A, B, A. And that thumb and that B that lasts for um, two quavers. So two eighth notes. If I'm talking the right American words, have a listen. One, two, three. So you've got one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so that's our little shape. Okay, we're going to play that three times. So you need to put your fingers straight back on to set up for the next bit. Let's try it three times in a row after two, okay? One, two. Once, twice, three times. Yeah, simple as that. Let's go again after two. Up four from F, then you play your E at the end. Three times. One, two. Great. Now we're going to move to the E, F, G. Have a listen. So three, two, one, E, F, G. We're going to go up and down those with a long E at the start this time. One, two, three, one, two, three. Try that after two. One, two. One more time. One, two. Okay, so we have that F pattern three times, then we go up from E. 
Let's try putting that together. So three times at the F pattern and then once in that E pattern. One, two. Three times. Move to your E pattern. Up three from E and back down again. Next, we're going to do our F pattern twice again. One, two. Excellent. Okay, and then we have our ending, which is the same ending as we had for the first part. To remind you, second on A, thumb on B, we're going to go A, B, A. Down four from the A, so you end up with two A's in a row. Down three from F. Let's play that together. One, two. Great, so that's the second part. It's a lot more straightforward. Just to run you through that again, you had your F pattern three times, once, twice, three times. Remember, now your E pattern is up three from E and back down again. Your F pattern twice now. Good. Ending phrase the same as it was for the first part. So A, B, A, down four from A, and down from the F. Nice. Let's go for, let's just go for it. Let's play the second part twice through. Okay, I think you've got that. After two. One, two, up from F. Up from F again. And for the third time. Up from E and back down. Twice this time from the F. Ready for your ending and go. And again, up three times from the F. Twice. Three times. Up from the E and down again. Twice. Ending. Excellent. Great. Okay. First part, remember, we had E, F, A, A, B. Up three from A and back down again. Two Fs. One with your thumb, one with your second. Up three from E. And down four this time to the D. Third phrase, same as the first, so E, F, A. A, B, up three from A and back down. Then your ending phrase, A, B, A, down four from A, and down three from F. Okay, so let's go for the whole, whole of the melody, twice through each part. Okay, one, two. Okay, so let's look at some left hand. I'm going to play you what is written on the music um, for the first part. I'll of course, as always, do a slightly easier kind of version of it um, and I'll let you know how that kind of differs as we go on. Have a listen. <laughs> with a D158 so remember D A D and we're splitting that so we're playing our D with our fourth finger and then two and one and A and D afterwards it's going one two three and that's going to go not with the first note but the first beat of the bar which actually is that F and then with the second note the 
E. So you've got your E by yourself, then you're working in together. So da bum bum together together. Have a listen. Then you put your E. Okay. Let's try that together. One, two. One more time. One, two. Next bit, you're going up three from A and back down. Now our left hand for this section, we have two chords. We have a G and a D, so a G fifth, played together. Keep your thumb on that D, move your second to the A. So we have A and D. So that's essentially a G fifth and an A fourth, an A and a D. So G and D, an A and D. Okay, those are going to come on the beat. So that means that it's going to come with that B and then with the last A. So G fifth with the B, A and D, the A fourth with the A. Let's try that first phrase with that left hand together. So you have your D one five eight split first, nice and slow. One, two. with the same split D158. And it's going to follow the same rhythm. So one, two, three. It's going to go with that first day. So hear how it listens. Or sounds, I should say, not how it listens. Oh, my use of the English language sometimes is weird. Right, let's do that again. Have a listen. So the split D comes with the first F and then you play the next F after it. After two. One, two. So that F, that second F, comes after you've played your left hand. One, two. Nice work. Our next part of the melody. Up three from E and down to the D. We're going to be on the beat again for this. So following similar rhythm as what our first phrase did. We're going to have a G octave and an A octave. Okay. Considerate damping is needed here. So remember your considerate damping. We're having the flat hand so that we can easily grab that G octave. And the reason our hand is also flat is because it makes it easier to tap it and slide up to the A. So it's not effective damping, you're full of the toothy damping, it's considerate damping to not annoy your neighbour. Okay, so you play, damp and slide up to that A and grab. Okay, now the G is going to go with the G. the A with the E. So we have G with the G, A with the E of the melody. One more time, after two. One, two. Again after two. One, two. Let's put it with the D chord before. So we have two Fs. One, two. D chord, G octave, and A octave. Let's go for it again. One, two. Great work. Okay. Let's go from the start. Remember you have your D158. A G fifth, so actually it's quite handy because your thumb's stuck in the D. And then an A and a D. Okay. From the beginning. One, two. E. D chord again with the F. An F by itself. G with a G. A with a E. Let's go for that again. One, two. G, A with the E. 
Now your third phrase melody is the same as the first. This is a bit where I'm going to push you. I'm not going to get you to do exactly the same left hand. Now nah, we're going to do something a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to give you two options for this. One's harder than the other. Okay, I'm going to start with the harder option. Okay, have a listen. I'm going to play it to you. Okay, we have some split octaves that are kind of dancing down and damping. Okay, so let's work on that first. We're having our hand flat out as it was for the G and the A octaves before. We're just going to have a D, a C, a B and an A. Now the first three of these octaves you're going to split. You're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so that's kind of emphasizing that kind of jig, the kind of lazy jig pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So what I'm doing is after I've played that D, I'm, as I'm playing the thumb, I'm suddenly immediately damping after I've played the thumb. I'm not immediately damping the finger, the first octave, but I'm damping everything after I play the thumb. And it's kind of ends up looking a little bit percussive where you're just grabbing that E. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you almost kind of have that kind of buzz kind of effect in that thumb, okay? And you are eventually damping that fourth finger as well, okay? So that's our first option, okay? The second option, if you want something a little bit more straightforward, is just to do octave straight down with your considerate damping. So it's damp, pat, move to the next one. You're patting those. The way that you're putting your hand on to damp that is you're actually putting it on to grab the next one. So you're damping as you're grabbing. Yeah, so that's how the considerate damping works when you're descending, okay? Before we were damp and slide because we were going up the heart, time we're going down, so we have to actually grab the next octave and use that grab as the damp. Okay, hope you're still with me there. So let's work in first the split octave once. I'm going to play it to you first. treat you and I'm going to name the exact notes that they come with. Okay, I'm going to try and make it easy for you. So we're not getting anything with the E, but with the F, A, that's where our Ds are going to come. So that's the same way that we had that D158. We've now got the split octave. Okay. Our next part of the melody goes A, B, and then we're up from the A and back down. Okay, so we're on the A, B bit. We're going to have a C octave. Our C's are going to come with the A. So remember we have A, B and then up from the A there. So those A's that you have, so this is kind of crossing over the kind of little parts that we split this into. That's when our C's happen. So with the C with the first A. And as we're going up three from the A, our second C comes. Let's put the D and the C together. One, two. So we have the F with the A, C with the A, nothing with the B, something with the A here. And now we're going up here. When we hit the Bs, that's when your B octaves are going to go. So it will sound like this. Together, together, C with the A, C with the A. Now we have a B immediately, so we've got another B octave here. And the second of the B comes there. That last note, we've got the A. So that was a lot of stuff there. I'm going to do it slow again. Ds, the first two notes. Cs with the A, so nothing with this B. C, now with the Bs, we have the B octave. And with that last A, the A octave. If you're just doing the first notes, it's going to come with the straight octaves. D with the F, C with the A and B, E with the first B, and with the A. Okay, so it's a bit more straightforward that. Let's try that again. One, 
two. Okay, so that's on the kind of simpler version of this arrangement. Let's try the dancing up just now. So the ones that are going down, they're kind of dancing down the part. After two. One, two. Stay down at that A octave. Our ending, remember? We're going to do two A octaves and they're going to come with the A, B, A with the A's of the A, B, A. After two. See if we can work that in. One, two. A, A. Nice one. With the last note with the D, a D octave. Let's try that again. Two A's with the A's. One, two. D with the D. One more time. One, two. Great work. Okay, so let's go from the start. You've got your D chord split. G fifth, A and D, that A fourth. D chord split. G octave, E octave, then you're dancing up to two A's and then the D. Cool. Let's go for it twice through, nice and steady. One, two. G fifth, E and D, your D chord split again. G octave, E octave, then you're dancing. Time with this and um, have a listen. familiar with my style. Now when I, my right hand goes up, um, my left hand tends to follow. So left hand is going to start on a D158 chord, so D A D, but in the treble clefs, we're above middle C now. Okay, that's going to go with our four notes. And it's really nice this bit, um, because our fingers are working together on each hand. So our fourth finger Fourth fingers come together, our second fingers come together, and our thumbs come together. So, fours together, seconds together, thumbs. Okay, so try and feel that, how that works. Our hands are working together. So, technically, we've got a chord note, a left hand note with the A, with the E, and with the B. Let's try and see if we can work it. So, four fingers at the same time. Second fingers at the same time, thumbs at the same time. One, two. Reset, let's go again. One, two. Good. Now, we're going to keep our second and our thumb on that A and D, but our fourth finger is going to go down to the C now. If you can place it, that's great. If you can't, don't worry about placing your thumb until you've played your bottom note. Same rhythm, so now we're C, A, D. Fourth fingers together, second fingers together, thumbs together. So we're in C, A, B. Let's try that C, A, D, sorry. Let's try it again. One, two. Surprisingly enough, our fourth finger's going down again to the B. So now we're in B, A, D. It is hard to place that. Don't worry about placing the thumb until you've played that bottom note. 
one, two. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. It's like, I don't know why I didn't expect that, but it is what it's supposed to do. After two, let's do it again for my sake. One, two. Good, so we have D, A, D, C, A, D, E, A, D. Okay, let's see if we can get all that going. One, two. C, A, D. Lovely. Now when we're going up from the E, da, 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 we're just going to brush in the A one five eight. So that's A, E, A, with that first note of the bar. So in the E. Let's try it together. One, two. Lovely. Let's add that in after two. One, two. Pattern twice. This time we're just going to go up a G one five eight. So G D and G, same rhythm. Fourth fingers together, second fingers together, thumbs together. So that's all we have. We don't have anything with the second time we play up from the A. So let's go for that after two. One, two. One more time. One, two. Good work. Okay, so we have D A D, C A D, B A D, brushed A chord, then G chord. Let's try that after two. One, two. Excellent. Our ending phrase. We have the same left hand, but it's going to be in a different place in the harp. Instead of two A's down there, we're going to keep it in the middle of the harp. So two A's with the A's and a D with the last note. Let's try that ending phrase together. One, two. Let's try all of that, okay? And the repeat is going to change ever so slightly, but let's see if we can get that. So D, A, D, C, A, D, B, A, D. Then your brush A, one, five, eight. Up a G, one, five, eight. Two A octaves and a D octave, okay? After two, D, A, D. One, two. C, A, D. D, A, D. And brush A. version you can just do single notes here okay but you'll have the music for it you'll be able to work it out after two one two the same notes but instead of playing up those we're actually going to play the last two together okay so this ends up kind of this is exactly the same notes but the way that we've changed the, the change that like how we're playing them is immediately kind of making it a little bit more edgy with syncopation okay so this time we're going to have the fourth fingers together and the two and one here come at the same time as the second finger Exactly same notes, A and D, brush your A chord, same idea with the G158, so we're splitting it. A octaves in the same place, nice, right? Then down to the D. Okay, 
let's let's try that variation okay so we're splitting it after two one two The second part now so we're doing it with the phone up first the first time round then on a repeat we do the split you ready after two one two Second part twice with the alternative left hand the second time round. Cool. After two, from the beginning. One, two. learning that tune, the Fadi B Jig. It's a, it's a great one. I think as well, one of the reasons I really enjoy teaching it and I think why folk have told me that they enjoy learning it as is because the second half is a little bit easier to learn than the first part. It's always kind of satisfying when you learn tunes like that, I have to say. So hope you've enjoyed uh, my little insight into the Isle of Man. Um, if you haven't worked out already, this is the Manx flag. They're very um, passionate about their Manx flags and actually 
even as I look around this room just now, we have several Manx flags dotted about the place. Um, my fiance is a kind of proud Manxman and I'm kind of, they're, they're very nice over there. They kind of say that I'm an honourable Manx person. Um, and I guess in October, fingers crossed, if our wedding actually happens because of what's going on, um, I will be, yeah, more official. A Manx person. Manx uh, married into the Manx family. So yes, um, if you'd like to learn more about um, the Isle of Man and particularly about its culture, I really recommend that you look up the organisation called Culture Bannon. So Culture Bannon, this is their website here, they're the kind of the organisation on the island that are responsible for promoting Manx culture. So that includes the music, the dance, uh, the crafts and the language. So they speak Manx Gaelic on the Isle of Man. A lot of my friends are fluent in it. Um, and actually, I think we'll probably do another Manx tune and we might do a Manx tune with a Manx Gaelic title in it. And I'll maybe see if I can cajole one of my friends to come in and give us a wee bit of a Manx lesson because that'd be a little bit different. So please do check out Culture Vannon's website. Um, look them up on YouTube. And actually, if you want to follow them on Facebook, they post really interesting Facebook posts and videos. They've got lots of great videos to watch. I highly recommend um, you look them up. Now, I'll put in the links section as well, some links to bands and musicians that you can maybe check out to kind of listen to what comes out of the island, I guess. And um, if you'd like to learn more Manx music on the harp, if you want to sign up for Somerset Online, I am doing two Manx music courses. I'm going to do a live workshop and I've actually just been pre-recording some Manx tunes for another workshop for them. So there will be an opportunity to learn four more Manx tunes at Somerset Online. So of course, be sure to sign up for that. And if you want to get stuck in right now, um, you can have a look. Geez, I'm right on the sale today, aren't I? Um, I have two Manx heart books that are available on my website, both in hard copy form, like this. You get the blue book, you get the red book. Um, both these books kind of go from easy to kind of more harder. They're both progressive and they're books that I use on my students on the island. Um, they're available hard copy like this and also in PDF download format. So worth uh, looking into if you want to learn some more Manx music for the harp. And I, of course, you do get uh, the music for Three Little Boats as well, the second tune that I played earlier on. So um, that'll be in your PDF as well. So two tunes for the price of one today, actually. Um, let me see. I've got a new mug today. This one says Glasgow's miles better. Glasgow smiles miles better. Nice kind of <laughs> piece of the English language there. Um, this mug with Mr. Happy. This was a kind of advertising campaign from, it was like eight, the eight, late 80s or early 90s, I think. When I used to come on holiday to Glasgow to visit my grandparents and my family, I used to always remember there was posters and things on buses with this logo. So I purchased it from my friend's uh, online shop called the Brawy Emporium. This is their link. They have great Scottish gifts, good banter, as I would say. Good crack Scottish gifts, they're well worth checking out and they're just along the road from us here in Glasgow so it's always good to shop local just now. So yeah, very much enjoying my new mug. So what else has been going on? Um, oh I've had confirmation of another harp course which is going online, Common Ground on the Hill, um, which is taking place from the 6th to the 10th of June. Now these are live workshops, I am doing two courses, five day courses there. Um, one on Celtic Chill. Celtic Chill is when basically you're going to do like tunes in the heart which are just really satisfying to learn. Okay, if you've maybe learned tunes Alden River or Looking at a Rainbow Through a Dirty Window for myself, um, they're very satisfying and chill tunes to learn. I'm going to choo uh, choose tunes that are kind of in the same kind of ilk as them because they're just lovely. So that's what I'm going to be spending the next few weeks is finding tunes for that course. Um, I'm also uh, doing a course called Hebridean Harp. So it's tunes from the Outer Hebrides, um, similar to the Strathspey, actually. Some, there'll probably be some Purst, similar to Strathspey that we learned in workshop two. So that's worth signing up for. Um, it will be live, probably on Zoom, I think. 
um, and it'll be quite slow paced to be honest I'm not gonna go really fast I taught for them last year and it was just the most lovely group of people really kind of nice laid back no not stressful situation for any of us and I so enjoyed it so I'm really looking forward to hooking up those folk online and virtually for Common Ground on the Hill so yes look them up um, what have I been up to this week? I'm trying to think, what day are we on? I'm starting to kind of lose touch a little bit with what day it is. I say I've been doing a lot of Zoom lessons this week. I've seen lots of my students on the Isle of Man, which has been lovely. So I'm kind of getting into a good routine now. I do kind of like Tuesday to Thursday, I do Zoom lessons in the afternoons. If you want a lesson actually, it's starting to get a little bit quieter now that I've kind of been doing a lot of filming for these workshops. Um, if you want to have a Zoom lesson with me, let me know and um, I can kind of hook you up and we can maybe have a lesson. Um, so Tuesday to Thursday are my Zoom lesson days. And then Friday, which is today, that's when I do all my filming. Saturday, I do editing slash kind of doing things in the house. Because you edit and then you have to let your, um, your video, your film render, which can take about an hour sometimes. And you can't really use your laptop to do anything else at that point. So that's when I normally kind of sort things in the flat. Um, I sorted out my makeup draw last week and my plan for tomorrow is I'm going to sort out the merch cupboard. We have a great um, kind of cupboard that's um, a bookcase with a big kind of door in front of it and it's built into our house. Gorgeous cupboard actually. It's got it's a kind of dark wood door of inlay. It's stunning. It's over 100 years old. Um, but it's our merchandise cupboard and it's an absolute stage just now. It's kind of ended up just kind of getting other stuff popped in it. So I'm going to clean that out tomorrow. So Saturday is editing and sorting day. Sunday and Monday I aim to take off. Monday I usually end up with some kind of things going on. But it's weird because I'm not really used to having a super strict routine. Especially around this year. Um, at this time of year. Like this is when kind of work tends to get a little bit busy and I'm doing a lot of travelling. So... Um, like it was going to be insane, like I'm supposed to be actually, I'm supposed to be in Ohio just now in Archibald teaching at the Heart Gathering. So I was going to be going there, then I was going to come back for two days and go to the Netherlands and then I was going to come back for two days and then I was going to Australia and then coming back for two days and going out to the US for like, oh no, going to Australia and then straight to Japan, back for a couple of days and then out to the US for a number of weeks. Like the next few weeks were going to be crazy and with no strict routine at all. So it's quite strange for me to have a routine, but I think in this lockdown situation, it's doing me good. It's forcing me to relax because I'm quite bad sometimes at relaxing when I'm home. There's always stuff I can kind of find to do that's work related or playing related or teaching related. So yeah, this is forcing me to take days off and it's forcing me to take kind of almost weekend days off. I'm not used to working Monday to Friday, but I've turned into a bit of a Monday to Friday person right now. So yeah, it's not too, it's not, it's not too bad. I'm kind of making the use of it all, the, the good use of the kind of lockdown stuff. And it's been great to do these workshops. I like having a focus each week. So yeah, um, that's what's been going on. Um, aye, next week, I don't know what we're gonna do next week actually. Not too sure. We might well do something Scottish again, I think. We will return to the Isle of Man, for sure. We've got another four weeks officially left. I think I'm gonna uh, carry on with these workshops. They seem to be going well. Um, might carry on for another couple of weeks after that, and then I might take a wee bit of a break, because that's when Common Ground is on, and I've got some other stuff happening that's virtual. Um, and then, who knows? We'll see how it goes. Please do let others know about this, these workshop series, though. Um, it's great to kind of be spreading the word amongst folk all over the world. I know that there's a lot of folk, I think the UK and the US are the kind of highest place where there's folk tuning in. So it's, yeah, it's great. And yeah, hope you enjoy this workshop. Please do explore more, as I said, about those kind of Manx music links. And I, I will see you next week. Cheers. Mm -hmm.